everyone for coming. Today I'm going to be talking about an admin UX uh, study that I've been working on for Drupal and also talking a little bit about what content editors in Drupal really want. Um, just to introduce myself, my name is Suzanne Dargachova. I'm one of the co-founders of Evolving Web, a Drupal agency up in Montreal and I do a lot of Drupal things. Um, I've worn lots of hats working on Drupal projects, doing uh, front-end development and site building, and um, I also love teaching Drupal. I go around and teach these workshops on how to use Drupal for developers and site admins, and I'm also on the board of the Drupal Association and have been doing a lot of community stuff recently, so um, I guess I'm doing lots of, lots of different things these days. Um, just a bit of background about Evolving Web where uh, we have about 11 years of Drupal experience and we're, we're working on all things, all things Drupal and we also have been building up our user experience practice over the last few years. So that's kind of where this um, talk kind of sprang, sprang up from was this interest in really making sure all of our projects had a good user experience base. Um, so that means you know, making sure when you're building a, a website that you actually know who you're building it for and you think about your users and you empathize with them. And part of the way we've done that at Evolving Web is we have uh, these UX, um, Evolve UX meetups that we run where people present their projects and they get a lot of, a lot of feedback from, from people who are looking at the UI or the, the product for the first time. Um, so it's kind of a way of practicing doing UX and practicing that kind of thinking. Um, and we've been able to uh, translate that expertise into a lot of our project work. So that's where I'm going to start the presentation today, is kind of doing a quick, a quick um, overview of what user experience is for those of you who aren't usually thinking in that space. So uh, when we usually think about user experience, we think about um, uh, product design or interface uh, design and actually user experience is kind of one piece of a, of a bigger puzzle. So when you think about how as a person, or you, you know we call them users but they're people, how people interact with organizations, um, there's often the digital aspect of how they interact with an organization but there's all kinds of other touch points. Um, so user experience design, usually we think about this as like the, the digital part of that experience, but of course there's also like, you know, the, the touch points where you're actually talking to somebody at an organization or experiencing the brand in other contexts. Um, so user experience design is uh, kind of like answering questions like, should we, should we put a call to action here? What kinds of calls to action? What for, should the information architecture be? So it's, it's playing that kind of role. And then the UI design is something more specific, like about the more purely visual aspects of a website, like what color should the button be? Um, and so user experience design is interested in how people assess experiences. So if you're thinking about you know, user experience, like what is my actual experience of going going to a particular web page or using a particular app. Um, well, there's lots of things that you can, you can assess, right? You can assess how long it takes you to do a certain task, um, whether the interface feels really predictable, if it's easy to use, um, if the tone of voice kind of matches where I'm at, what I'm thinking, and if I'm able to do what I want to do. So when we think about user experience, we're often assessing things with these criteria in mind. So you can kind of think of this as like a little, a little checklist that you can adapt to whatever it is you're building. Um, and so then this applies to, to elements in, in different ways. So if you're, if you're doing um, user experience design and then you're actually building out an interface, uh, usually you're going to be thinking through kind of what the architecture is, what you're emphasizing, um, what text you're including, what content you're including, so content strategy plays a role here, and then what the layout and proximity of elements are. So user experience design is, is all of this. It's like, you know, the big questions um, about uh, 
who's using the site and then what are we actually what are we actually setting out to build. Um, so we can sit around and design like when you think about just people's experiences, right? Think about, okay, we want to build great products and great experiences for users, and we want to make people happy. And sometimes people think, like, that's what user experience design is. It's just like making users happy. Well, if you really want to make users happy, I can give you a, uh, a great way to do this. You show them videos of puppies, or sometimes kittens, and, um, and then you're done. You know, you just make people happy, and and you don't have to uh, do more than that. Um, but usually when we think about user experience design, we actually have, want to have a strategy behind it. And the strategy part is where we think about how, um, what the user want, what a user's goals are, how that intersects with what your business goals are. So it's not just like making users happy, but it's like what part of making users happy is also going to make the company you're working for or the organization you're working for, what you're trying to achieve, how, how are the two things going to fit together? What's the overlap of those goals? Um, and so you can, you can use this kind of thinking to kick off any kind of user experience work, um, starting off with this kind of strategy piece. Um, so today I'm going to talk about how this applies to Drupal. So you can apply user experience strategy to all kinds of things. Um, about uh, almost a year ago now at DrupalCon Nashville, I um, was talking to people from different parts of the community, um, some people who are really interested in doing UX work, and then some other folks who are working on the new admin UI. How many of you have heard of this new admin UI initiative? Yeah, so this is exciting, right? Like this is in every... Every Dries note, you see these little demos, like, okay, we're going to have this uh, JavaScript-based backend for Drupal, and it's going to be fast, and it's going to be awesome, and it's going to look great. Um, and there's a design that's being developed for that, and it's kind of in the, in the early, early phases. So at DrupalCon Nashville, I was talking to, to these different um, people, and we decided that it might be interesting to do some testing. So before going to all the work to implement this new design, maybe we should test how users actually interact with Drupal and what that design should look like. Um, and so we started having some conversations about what that should look like. And those kind of early conversations, so talking about the user experience strategy we should have for, for Drupal, we kind of think about two things what the business goals are and what the user goals are. And I think this question is kind of funny, like what are Drupal's business goals? Well, that's maybe a hard question to answer because Drupal is not a business and, or a person or even a, a, a single product, right? Like whenever you're interacting with Drupal, it's always different, it's always configured differently for a different use case. Um, and, uh, and Drupal's a community, so different people in the community, of course, are gonna have different goals. So one goal that you might have if you're, you know, designing a new backend for Drupal, it's just like building uh, the trust and the goodwill of the people who are interacting with Drupal. Like you want people to like Drupal because you want them to go and spread the word and tell all their friends, oh, I've been using this awesome new, new, new tool. I've been testing out this thing, or you know, I used Drupal ten years ago and I just tried it and it's amazing. Um, and uh, another, another reason you might be trying to improve Drupal is because you want to sell Drupal to people who are evaluating it. Uh, or you might want to just be helping organizations adopt Drupal. And then when we think about the content side, like maybe our goal is really to provide a great platform for managing structured content. Like that's what Drupal's always been good at. Or maybe we want to uh, compete with other platforms that are focusing more on marketing content. Like, how do we make Drupal awesome for that? Like, maybe that's what we want to uh, sell Drupal as. Um, Drupal is also known as being a really powerful, flexible tool. So maybe we should just be focusing on that side of things and, um, and you know, not worry about simpler applications. 
Um, and now, you know, at every Drupal camp, I'm sure some of you today have attended sessions uh, related to decouple Drupal. So what if people are just using Drupal as a content hub? Maybe that should be our goal, to make Drupal a great platform for that. So there's lots of different business goals flying around, and we could have a whole conversation here. I'm sure if I got you all to raise hands, you'd all have different ideas about what Drupal is for. What is the main business goal and, and use case for it? So this is one conversation. Um, another conversation we started to have is like, okay, what are users trying to do with Drupal? When we think about Drupal users, like what does that even mean? Um, who are we building? Who are we building Drupal for? Um, it's, uh, it's like there's so many different answers to this question, right? Is it mostly do we just want to please the people evaluating Drupal, like doing a quick demo? Um, and uh, this is where the um, who, who here has tried out the Umami use, uh, profile? Only two people? Check it out, it's like new in Drupal. You go to install Drupal and you, you select instead of minimal standard, you have now this third option. Um, so this is there to help convince uh, evaluators that Drupal is, is awesome out of the box. Um, so that's, a, that's one thing for them. Um, but then there's also content editors using Drupal every day to edit content. There's people administering websites and then building, like more like we call them site builders sometimes, like people doing the configuration. And then there's also people doing more of the development. So they're also building the site, they're also using the UI, but they're working on the back end too in the code. So these are different types of users and we could also have a long debate today just about these personas and which ones, uh, you know, how we should define them and which ones are more important and what each one wants. But this is kind of a, a rough breakdown of how I would, I would break down different users, different types. So we were having this conversation at DrupalCon Nashville and trying to figure out, you know, how, what, what should we focus on if we're trying to evaluate how users interact with Drupal and how to improve their experience. And we decided to focus on content editors. And that's because it seemed like content editors were maybe being a little bit ignored. Um, there's not a lot of content editors that come to Drupal events or participate in uh, code sprints or contribution sprints. And so um, maybe, maybe we need to get more of their input in terms of how Drupal should, should behave. Also, when we think about the different um, different personas, you know, a, a site admin or a developer is probably more of an advanced user who's going to invest more time. So if there's user experience problems, they're more likely to get over them because they might be a more technical user, someone who has actually more time to figure out Drupal, whereas a content editor, Drupal's a very small part of their, their job in many cases, right? They've got a lot of... Uh, work to do, maybe writing content or other administrative tasks, and they just have this this little portion of their job that's like, oh yeah, you have to update the website. Um, so we thought that putting an emphasis on them would be important. Um, so then we asked the question, well, what do what do content editors want? What do we know? What do we think that they want? Well, probably they want to be able to draft content. They want to be able to find their content and approve get content approved, things like this. Some of them, I think, also want to create some fancy marketing content. So this kind of goes back to those business goals. Like, do, do we want to optimize the experience for that? Um, certainly, for some content editors, being able to create a really great landing page that they'll be able to use to market um, a, new, a new product or event or something, like this is really valuable for them. Um, and then surely content editors also want to be able to manage images properly and translate content. So there's a lot of, a lot of different things, but these are the types of um, things that content editors typically want. Um, I, I think it's important to think, think about the content editing experience, um, but one challenge about it when you start to think about it, is that the content editing experience, just the way Drupal works, right? It's just one part of the more like site building experience of Drupal. So the UI that content editors use 
it's like a subset of what a developer would use or a site builder or a site admin. It's like a smaller piece. So it's actually hard to just say, well, let's build a whole other UI for content editors. That's not really how, how Drupal works on the back end, right? So we're kind of taking off this piece and, and, um, and maybe that's gonna be, maybe that's gonna be a challenge to improve it for them without kind of messing up the experience for all the other users. So this is the, this is the challenge that we kind of set for ourselves. Um, and so we looked at different techniques. We started talking like to user experience people in the Drupal community, like what should we do to try and improve improve uh, content editor experience. And so we decided to start with an, an easy thing. So user experience, there's lots of different things you can do. Um, a survey is kind of like the easiest thing you can do. So like, let's start there. Let's just figure out um, some basics about what content editors are looking for and define that more just by asking them questions. So we, we put together a survey and we distributed it to um, places where there's Drupal content editors. So we were focusing on people who are already editing content in Drupal who already have this role. So we asked them, well, first of all, we made sure that they were content editors. Some people uh, said they were content editors and then in the other questions they said, yeah, and I also like do configuration management and apply patches and this and that. So we kind of, you know, narrowed it down to like, okay, who are the, who are the people who we're targeting here? Let's make sure we're, we're talking to the right folks. Um, we asked them yeah, what, what tasks they're doing, uh, what they like about Drupal, what they find challenging, and what they thought could be improved. So we got a whole bunch of, of feedback from these people. And, um, and they gave us some pretty clear answers. Like there were some pretty strong trends. Um, a lot of people asked for a more modern UI, just visually. So they just said, well, Drupal just looks out of, out of date. Like it looks like it's something from, I don't know what they said, like 10 years ago. So we should just update the UI. Um, so they were really just looking for something maybe more, more modern. Um, some people were talking about the complexity. So this is interesting. So at the same time, a lot of people said they liked Drupal because it was flexible. So they, they said that like, that's, you know, that's probably why a lot of us like Drupal too, right? Um, but then they said, yeah, but it's so complicated. <laughs> so this is always the, the issue. Like it's a flexible platform, but that makes the UI trickier to use. And people mentioned things like panels and paragraphs and um, you know, this kind of complexity in the content editing interface. Um, some people mentioned, you know, you have to go to a different place to edit, edit blocks and this is confusing. Um, so a lot of, the, a lot of these uh, types of challenges. Um, people were looking for better media management, said that like, you know, WordPress has a great media management system, what about Drupal? And then um, WYSIWYG editor issues, I guess. This is common. WYSIWYG editors are hard to, to build to be perfect. And um, along the same lines, autosave was a frequent thing that people were asking about. And then um, it seemed like people wanted more role-based configuration for content editors because they, these content editors were saying like, well, there's so, many, there's so many options, there's so much jargon, like the interface has a lot in it that I don't need. Um, so those content editors were actually looking for something that, uh, like an interface that's just more simplified, maybe with fewer permissions. So I think a lot of these things, it's, it's interesting because depending on how you configure a Drupal site, you could, you could easily address some of these issues, right? You could easily go in and just say, oh, well, let's just, um, let's just add a better role for content editors so that they're not so overwhelmed or simplifying the complexity of the content editing UI. Like maybe you can just change the, the widgets and the way that you have paragraphs configured to make the interface simpler for them. So there might be some improvements that you could make just for the content editors by doing, um, by doing some things on the site building side. But that's not to say that we shouldn't make the default Drupal uh, experience for content editors better. Like what can we do in Drupal core just out of the box to make 
their experience better so that so that it's kind of better for everyone. Um, so that's where we got with the survey. So we kind of have these things. And also some of these things like media management. So this was just before uh, media was in uh, in core and usable. So, so some of these things obviously the Drupal community is already working towards addressing. So the next technique that we looked at doing as part of this UX study was a card sort. So a card sort is a really classic uh, technique where you go and you take all the different um, all the different content or tools or functionality in an interface and you put them on cards. Like if you do it in person, you put you put them all on physical cards and then you get people to uh, group the cards together to say, I think that these kind of tasks or these tools or this content is related. And it's a really fun ex exercise to do in a room together because you can kind of, um, you know, you fight with your colleagues. You're like, oh, this is related to that, and this is related to that. And um, people have great conversations and think through the, the content. And you can also do this online. So we did, you, we used a tool called Optimal Workshop, and we put all these tasks that content editors said that they were doing, and we got them to group all the tasks together. And remember, these are actual Drupal content editors who are already using Drupal. And so we ended up with some results, which basically just reflected what the current admin UI has. So we had no no um, kind of shocking results. Nobody was saying that we should really organize things differently. The whole separation of content and structure, um, people kind of were, were on board with that. And maybe that's just because we were asking people who are already familiar with that interface. So we didn't learn too much from this, um, but it kind of made us think we should focus more on the, um, not on the overall maybe information architecture, but on the interface on a more page by page basis. So the, the, the next thing we did, we were, we were thinking, okay, we're, we're, the, the plan is to create this new interface, right? So there was already work being done to, to start off some wireframes for the new admin UI. Like what should this what should this look like? And in doing that, of course, um, Christina Chumlis, who was has been doing a lot of this design work, she's really been working hard. In in starting off those wireframes, she was doing research into other content management systems. So of course she was looking at things like like WordPress and what they're doing with the Gutenberg project. And so we were thinking, well, rather than try and uh, test test uh, Drupal, which has already been there's already been some user testing done, and rather than testing these wireframes, which we really weren't sure about yet, what approach we should take, we decided let's instead test the competition. Let's go out and test WordPress and see if it's really a UI that people like. Let's see how content editors react to this, or let's look at other other content management systems to see what they're doing and get some ideas. See what patterns we can find that work and maybe some patterns that don't work. So we um, we set up this test and we created a, a script that we would run through with all the, the participants. And we ran through the same script with four different content management systems. So we asked them what they thought of the UI, like we just showed them in general, like what do you see when you log in as a content editor. We asked them to create an article, we got them to create it as a draft and add links and headings to it. Uh, they went through and edited it and published it, so kind of taking it through that publication workflow. And then we asked them what they thought could be improved. And we focused for this first test just on simple content. So we just got them to create an article. So we gave them a Google Doc with this little article and we told them, go ahead and create this. And the CMSs we tested, we had uh, lots, of back, lots of back and forth about what should, we should be testing. We tried to get different kinds of UIs. So we tested Contentful. Is anyone familiar with this? Contentful, it's used mostly as a, just like a backend for decouple projects. Um, so it's got kind of more, it's kind of maybe more Drupal-ish in that it's uh, got a lot of developers that use it. 
Um, WordPress, so this is something you're probably a lot of you familiar with. Uh, and then Squarespace, this was kind of the one where we're like, let's try one of these more page builder like tools that's um, used more for smaller websites. And then Craft CMS, which is one that had been recommended because it has, a, has an interesting, um, uh, like a nice preview interface when you're publishing content. So that's why we selected that one. Um, so we, we asked people when they first saw these interfaces, like, okay, what do, you, what do you think when you first see this? We gave them kind of, you know, a minute to get oriented. And the, uh, the users in our study, by the way, were all um, already Drupal content editors. So they already had some bias because they're already familiar with Drupal. Um, so, so that was their background. And when we asked them what they thought, so uh, they said, <laughs> for, uh, for, for some of these interfaces, so Contentful in particular, when you first log in, it gives you this interface and it's kind of talking about the, um, it's kind of talking about the platform. And there's a lot of technical jargon on the page when you first log in. Um, so it's not just talking to content editors, but it's also talking to the developer who might be creating a contentful website. So there's a lot of text in there for them. And so people found this quite kind of confusing and basically just didn't read any of the content because they felt like it wasn't for them. Um, the WordPress interface, it's true, like a lot of the participants already had experience with Drupal just because a lot of people have used Drupal, uh, sorry, they already had experience with WordPress because so many people have used WordPress. Um, but what I think they liked about WordPress is that at the, there, there's, in the WordPress admin UI when you log in, you see at the top some content for content editors, like things specifically about publishing and managing content. And then everything that's sort of more about managing your site is just further down the page. So WordPress just kind of puts the emphasis on that um, kind of authoring experience just by putting that content up top. Um, Squarespace, actually a lot of the participants, because they were familiar with Drupal, saw right away that Squarespace was offering a more limited set of functionality. So they actually said, I don't think this platform would be, uh, would be, would work for my site because it's just, there's just not enough here. So the simplicity actually kind of scared them. And one of the participants actually thought, oh, because you're doing this study, maybe it means that my, my organization is switching to another platform. And they were like, no, we can't use this, this platform. It just doesn't have enough functionality. So it was interesting that the content editors were kind of recognizing that. Um, and then Craft CMS, the dashboard of Craft CMS actually has, uh, I don't, and I'm, I'm still not sure how I feel about it, but it has a form right in it for creating content. So right away, like on the first page when you first log in, you see this form right there to create, a, 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 I think it's called a post in Craft CMS. So um, that people like, everyone jumped right into that and they focused their attention on this, on this form. So basically first impressions were definitely important. So like whatever, whatever somebody was kind of thinking after having a minute to look at the UI, that kind of carried over into the rest, what they thought of the rest of the interface. Uh, content editing, so then their first task was to create an article, just to go and, you know, find the button to, to create something. Um, the uh, interface for Contentful, uh, which is on the left here, so it actually asks for Markdown, and every, all, the, all of our users were, were used to using Drupal and used to using a, a WYSIWYG editor, and they did find that the Markdown and the Markdown editor was, was a little confusing. So that's what a lot of people focused on there. Um, and then there's also, when you go in and you create content in Contentful, there's a field, a big field, you can kind of see here on the top, it's called description, and then one further down is called body. It's kind of like summary and body in, in Drupal, like that's often what these are going to be used for. And that was confusing to people, like why is there a description, why is there a body, and there's nothing to kind of explain what's what. So there was a clear, 
it was clear that these little labels are really important for, for people creating content. Um, and just a little ambiguity about the labels really got people uh, kind of caught up. Um, in Craft CMS, Craft CMS has a, an interface, if you've ever, who here has used Craft CMS? Anyone? It's worth a try just to see, like it's quite similar to Drupal in some ways, and it's got these components you can add to the content, um, uh, and they're called, well, they're called sections, and there's different types. So it's kind of like uh, what you might build with paragraphs if you were trying to build landing pages in Drupal. Um, so there's a section called a heading, a text, uh, image, quote, and you can, you can extend these as well if you're configuring proxy events. And, uh, and so users in general really liked this UI for creating content. They all figured out what that meant. They all got the concept. And, uh, and like the paragraphs idea, there each one, each component has its own little set of fields. So people right away gravitated towards using that UI for adding things like images to their content. So then we get to the other two. So uh, Craft CMS and Contentful, I think these UIs, like if we look at them, we see like, okay, this is pretty similar to what we have in, in Drupal. Um, the WordPress and Squarespace UIs were a little, a little different. Um, first of all, we used Squares, we used WordPress with uh, the Gutenberg editor enabled. So that's the UI we were testing because we wanted to see, you know, how people reacted to this new uh, controversial thing. Um, and what I found interesting about what people thought, so if you haven't, if you haven't seen this UI before, again, it's worth just checking out to see what, what all the talk is about. Um, it's a UI where basically you, you click into the UI and you have this option to create different kinds of little content components. And you can, um, you can pick from a list and it's kind of like adding these little types. And then that all gets turned into like basically a big blob of HTML on the back end. Um, and so what you see when you're creating the content with the Gutenberg editor, it's not actually what the content is going to look like on the front end of your site, but it does look really nice. Like when you're creating the content, like it's all kind of spread out, there's a lot of white space, like it's a really attractive interface for creating content, and it kind of makes your content look nice and important. So I think that's why people who like, people who like it, that's why they like it. And, um, and when we were testing it, people said things like, oh yeah, it looks like there's an instant preview. Like, I really like all the space. Like, uh, um, it seems like everything I'm creating, it's like creating this separate kind of paragraph or a separate block of content. Um, and the fact that they could just see all their content and it was nice and big, people just like this experience. Um, at the same time, people were making assumptions. So the content editors we were testing with I think every single one of them, maybe maybe with one or exception, they thought that the what they saw here was exactly what the content was going to look like on the front end of the site. And when they saw what the content looked like in the end, the theme that was installed that we had installed on this WordPress site, it wasn't the like fanciest theme. It wasn't that nice. So they were all disappointed. They were like, "Oh, my content looked better in the editor," which was very interesting. Also, a lot of them were saying when they saw this, oh, like I, I, it looks like I can't edit the HTML. So they were all asking, like, well, I'm, I'm worried that I won't be able to edit the source if I need to. Um, which me, as like a, a, a site builder developer, I'm like, oh, well, I, I don't want you to edit the source. <laughs> I, want, I want to have like these like fields that are structured and, and you can't edit. Um, and so it was interesting that they all uh, assumed and thought that they should be able to go and edit the source of the HTML. And then the other, the other editor that we tested, the well, on Squarespace, the editor looks like this. How many of you have tried Squarespace? Yeah, so it's, uh, it's um, kind of similar in that you have an editor where you can just add content and it looks quite attractive. And then to add one of these little like uh, components of 
a content within it. Like if you want to add an image or you want to add a, a quote or anything like that inside your, your text area, use this plus button. So we told all the, the content editors to create this article and there was an image in the article. And a lot of them had trouble figuring out how to add an image. They did not find this little plus button. Um, basically, nobody found it. Which I thought was interesting, because I always thought that Squarespace was easy to use, maybe because in their marketing they say, easy to use, drag and drop tools. And I, I just assumed that they were, that, that it was really easy. Um, and so people, people had a hard time finding this. Um, there's also, within the content, there's some metadata that you can edit on the different tabs to, to upload kind of like a featured image and People also didn't have a, you know, weren't easily able to find this. But in general, people did like the UI. Um, they seemed to be happy, uh, except for this frustration of not being able to add, to add things, uh, or to be able to find this, this plus button. So that really hung people up. Um, and I think a lot of the time, like when we design things, we assume that Simplicity is what we should be aiming for. Whereas, if you're if you're developing something and it's so simple that maybe it's not providing enough uh, context or enough options or enough description text, um, maybe it's maybe it's too simple. So the next thing we were looking at. Um, you know, we, we didn't just have people to create an article, we actually got them to go through the process of creating a draft and then previewing it and then publishing it. So a few things we noticed here. One thing uh, people really liked was the preview on the crafts uh, in Craft CMS. So the way Craft CMS works is like you can just create an article, like in the screenshot I was showing before, like just using a form. And then you can also go into this preview mode where you're still editing the article, you have the form, and then on the other side of the page you get a preview of what it's gonna look like in the, on the front end. And, um, and people really liked this. They liked the fact that, well, Craft CMS, um, just out of the box, it's like the Drupal uh, out of the box uh, install profile where you have a theme that looks nice. Uh, it's actually, instead of a food theme, it's a beer theme. So people really love this. They're like, oh, I'm so good at this. My content looks great. People love the experience of just being able to see the preview and having a nice theme that, that looked attractive. Um, and I think the side-by-side -side preview thing was very intuitive for people. Nobody was taken out of context or confused by having the side-by-side -side preview. In terms of publishing workflow, this is something that seemed to cause a lot of anxiety. Like the most anxiety during this, this user testing was around, is my content saved? Is my content published or is it not published? Um, how do I publish my content? How do I delete? At the end, we got everyone to delete their content. Um, so they, they were all like, is it really deleted? I'm not sure. So this was, this was where the anxiety came in. And what we noticed was that um, in Contentful, that's the screenshot on the left here, in Contentful there, was, there were like a couple places you could, you could go to change the status. There's like these actions and then there's also this little drop down to change the status. And also you had to go through steps. So you had to go through like before you could delete something you'd have to unpublish it. And, this was confusing to people. So the number, the, the, the lack of kind of transparency about this status and the fact that the options were in different places has caused some confusion. The WordPress UI also was on the right hand side of the page like this. And this seemed to make sense to people. So having the preview, publish, um, all in one spot, move to trash. Um, one thing about this, the move to trash uh, label. Um, they people see, were thinking. I think maybe in the mindset of like, oh, you have you move something to the trash and then you have to empty the trash. So when when people click move to trash, they were like, is it really deleted? Can I should I empty the trash now? And I thought that was that was interesting. Um, so we kind of got some insight there into 
just um, having a maybe a more consolidated section for the status of the content as well as updating the status and kind of trying to keep it all in the same place. Um, one thing users really liked was autosave, surprise, surprise. So being able to like know that your content has been saved and um, have that reassurance and um, just being able to, to see that um, made, users, made users happy for sure. So we gathered a lot of information um, and kind of tried to summarize that into some takeaways, like what patterns can we actually learn from, what should we take to apply to the Drupal admin UI. Um, so one thing was that it seemed like complexity is um, not always a negative, but it should be commensurate to what task you're doing. So people were happy to have a UI that was a little bit more complex because they realized that they would get more functionality out of that. So that, that was a really nice thing to see. Um, editors um, really liked a content editor-friendly interface. So having some text that just appears or some interface that's clearly for content editors when they logged in was really nice. So, you know, having terminology and language that they would, they would understand, not seeing jargon or confusing terminology, that was definitely something that editors wanted to see. Um, they wanted to be able to see and edit HTML, which I thought was interesting. Um, and um, they definitely wanted to know and be able to change the state of the content um, and just to be able to do that really, really easily. So after we published these results, um, the question came up like, okay, this is, this is great. We can maybe use some of this feedback in the new admin UI, but what can we actually do right now? So what are some things that we can uh, implement sooner than later. Um, and so I came up with this list. There might be other things to add to it. Um, I think autosave is something that would be awesome to add and content editors would just would just love it. It would be like, you know, when when Drupal got the WYSIWYG editor in core, like, you know, people people were happy to see that. I think autosave would have a similar impact. Um, and there is an issue in 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 uh, on Drupal.org for the for autosave, so it's it's sitting there and um, anyway, it's sitting there. Uh, content editor role. So this is something that's recently been added to the issue queue as like an idea. So it's, this idea is being developed. What exactly should a content editor role consist of? What could that look like? Um, how permissive should it be? Should it be called content editor because some people don't like? That, they call it author, they call it content manager. Um, so there's some, definitely some conversation to have there. Um, uh, redirecting users to the content overview page when they log in, maybe this is a nice idea. Certainly seems to be a pattern that people find uh, predictable, makes sense to them. Moving the save button. So every UI we, we were looking at, the save button was over on the right hand side at the top, along with all the kind of publication information. And this seemed to make sense to people. So I'm not sure that this is worth doing because moving the save button, like remember when the save button was moved in views? And like <laughs> everyone was like, where is the save button? So maybe that's a bad thing to change a UI just because, but um, this seemed to be something that people liked. And um, modernizing the admin UI. Uh, so um, again, like people seem to just like the look of a new UI, like the WordPress uh, Gutenberg, just the fact that there's more space, people are just happier. Um, and so here's, these are all kind of short-term improvements. And the last one actually has a lot of work that's been done behind it. So one of the, um, one of the things that happened over the last year is that um, there's uh, been a project to develop a new look and feel for the new admin UI. So as a, as a step towards modern, modernization and um, coming up with a brand new admin UI, um, as like a step before that, 
there's been this project to just change the look and feel of the existing admin UI. So basically creating a new version of the seven theme that will not change the user experience, but just change the look. And so the designs for this have been, um, I won't say finalized because I still see them changing a bit, but you know they've been they've been put out there. They're they're mostly done. And uh, the new theme that's being developed from this is called Claro, and this will. Um, look kind of like this on the right and have a nice color scheme and space and typo uh, typographical improvements and just subtle changes to icons and things to make the UI things look more more like 2019. So a lot of attention to put on making sure it's still accessible but also uh, nice to look at. And um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's a huge improvement. There's a link there to some more information. Um, what's next? So another thing that's come out of this is like, oh, we started talking about maybe the Drupal admin UI should look more like WordPress. Uh, and, and so now people are up in arms. Like, is this the right direction for Drupal? Um, what are we actually trying to achieve? What are we optimizing for? Um, and so there's a, a thread on drupal.org issue. 3024584, you can go check it out um, and join the debate about what what the Drupal, yeah, what the Drupal admin UI, like who who is this for, what kind of, um, uh, like are we optimizing for the right use case, are we, should we be encouraging editors to create more flexible content or should we be focusing on the core Drupal like structured content? Um, so that's, a, that's another thing to figure out. Um, in the meantime, there have been wireframes developed for the admin UI, so at some point, we want to also do some testing on these. We want to do some testing on more complex content. So it's one thing to say, well, let's make Drupal great for publishing articles, but most of your content, like if you have Drupal sites, right, you have complex content I'm looking at. Uh, in the back row, you've got these books with massive amounts of fields. So if you've got tons of fields and you're managing content with a, or you're managing content with a layout, or you're creating kind of more um, this, of this landing page style or magazine style content, like what's the best interface for that? Is that going to be something, you know, like that we should test separately? Um, there's also been tons of work done in the layout builder, and the layout builder is a tool for templating content, but also can be used for, you know, designing what one node will look like. So is that something that, I know there's been testing work done on that too, um, but how does that fit into this puzzle? And then uh, also, in the meantime, you know, we've been thinking a lot about content editor experience. Um, but I do a lot of work uh, running Drupal trainings and I'm always thinking about how those site builders are struggling with things when they're first learning Drupal. Um, so there's a lot of stuff to improve um, on that side as well. So basically a lot of next steps. Um, this UX study it feels like it's just, just getting started um, and I hope to kind of make some progress, get some more people involved. Um, I know at the end of this kind of talk, people are always like, okay, well, what can, what can I do? How should I get involved? So there's a admin UI channel on the Drupal Slack um, where all these things are being um, discussed. A lot of it's about the new admin UI initiative, but also we're having this conversation about UX study. Um, there's also a weekly UX um, meeting uh, for Drupal. It's on Tuesdays at 3.30. 3.30. Tuesdays at 3.30 Eastern Time. So um, that's also a good place to discuss these things and get get input and figure out what what problems to solve, how to solve them, get, get progress made. Um, for those of you who are watching this and just want to learn more about user experience in general, what are some, what are some things we can learn? So uh, definitely as part of this I, I think we've learned that um, qualitative research is, is important. Having kind of some balance of, you know, getting users input um, and seeing how people use, use a tool is good. It would be nice if we had more quantitative information about how people are configuring their Drupal sites. Um, 
so that would be that would be nice as well. Um, focusing on who you're designing for, I think it's nice to kind of focus on on content editors, um, but also realizing like the the overall different audiences for Drupal uh, while we're doing that, and then. It's, it's a challenge to just say, like, oh, let's redesign the whole Drupal admin UI. Um, <laughs> this is not an easy thing to do. There's a lot of moving pieces, and you can break a lot of things by saying we should have this new UI. Um, so I think iterative progress, kind of making changes, improvements, um, one piece at a time, uh, might lead to better, certainly faster results. Um, and if you want to do start doing UX, stuff yourself. There's a bunch of tools. I just put a list up here so it's in the slides. So you can check out some tools for actually doing testing, running testing. Um, and I put up some information about the trainings that I'm doing coming up, including one in Princeton uh, in May. So I put those dates up. But I would love to hear your questions and any feedback or ideas. We have a few minutes for questions. In the one that had the preview, mm -hmm. so they allowed them to move it to be the responsive view of that and then back to, or is that something that we're also being able to, thinking about and being able to top back and forth between desktop and mobile? This is, yeah, this was something that was in. Question. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so the question was about, um, well, particularly in the craft CMS preview interface, whether that would allow you to see the responsive. Um, well, how the site behaves on like different sizes of screen, and um, basically it does that. If you resize your screen, there will just be less room. But there's no particular, as far as I, as far as I know, there's no particular button for changing the size. This was something that was proposed in the new admin UI wireframes. It's something we were looking at was having um, a button to toggle for the preview whether you wanted to preview on different device sizes, but then also there be able to maybe have a plugin to preview what it would look like um, in a different, com completely different UI, right? Like if you had a decoupled site, and then it's not like really the front end of the Drupal site, it's the front end using some other thing that you'd want to test. But that would have to be maybe some kind of plugin that you developed for your particular front end. So a question about the research and how the uh, test subjects were already familiar with Drupal. We wanted to, I guess, start off by looking at people that we knew were, were content editors. And if you're familiar with Drupal, then like, how would you react to Drupal suddenly changing and having a different UI? So that's why we picked, um, I guess, that's why we selected Drupal content editors for the first study. Um, no, but question was, in your, you your research, yeah. are you looking for novice? Yes, yes. So, we, so it's been suggested that for this next study that we also make sure we do something with people who are uh, brand new to Drupal. So if you're just like coming for the first time, what kind of UI would be best uh, for you? So I think that will be, be part of it. Um, it's sometimes hard to know exactly how to design these studies so you don't skew the results too much. Um, and, uh, but I think it's, it's, uh, it's actually just as easy to find people with no Drupal experience. Uh, so this will definitely be part of some of the upcoming testing. So I was just going to say that we will have some subjects for you, but uh, that would be probably oh. Yes. If you no, not too soon. If you have subjects for me, if you if you have people who want to be test subjects, I would love to hear from you. So please get in touch. Were these all Drupal seven or Drupal eight users or a variety? Of oh, good question. Yeah. So the Drupal users that we have found in the study were a mix of seven and eight users. So some of them, they all had Drupal experience, but it wasn't all with Drupal eight. And I noticed that like everything was concentrated on like editing an article, like the body of an article. But from my experience, one of the hardest things for users is like adding a file and linking to a file. Was that covered at all in the testing? 
No, yeah, so that's uh, the question was about whether we tested adding a file, editing a file. So we didn't test this, only we tested um, having people upload an image, but not, uh, not uh, another kind of file or linking to a file or, now, now that, um, well, we might want to do something with the media, ma media management, testing the UI for this, now that that's uh, in core. So that's something to add to the list of things to test. I think that would be a good one. Anything else? Okay, amazing. Well, thanks all for coming, and let me know if you want to help out.